You know, the reason why I got this new Camus, twin powered, mercury powered Camus, was to do this exact thing that we wanted to do, run across the Bahamas. Taking smaller boats across many times, you know, always had a buddy boat with you. But when you have the ability to have twin power, you know, there's just an extra sense of reliability to cross the Atlantic. So, you know, whether it's shallow water or deep blue, it kind of does it all. And, you know, getting over here to the Bahamas, Deep water fishing can be really good. It offers a lot of opportunities to wahoo, you know, all types of pelagic, chasing tunas, chasing birds. But also, you know, you can have a good time just getting out in the shallows and, and diving as well. So excited to get over there with the guys and, and see what this boat can do. We just made the crossing, ran the new 28 twin Camus across the big stream here at Blue Marlin Cove. We're in West End. Justin, he's very familiar with this place. His dad, his uncle actually owns this place, so uh, it's cool to come over here with someone with some local knowledge. Jackson, who fishes with me all the time. It's kind of a boys' trip, weekend trip. You know, really the reason why I got this boat with these twin motors, open ray radars, to come over here and do these things. It's obtainable for a weekend trip or just a quick getaway is kind of what we're doing and just gonna keep it light, try a bunch of different stuff. A little deep dropping, a little diving, and maybe try for a wahoo along the way, see if we can get lucky on one of them. It's gonna be good. So just a quick 78 mile run across the stream and it's kind of late afternoon. We didn't leave uh, Stewart until 12 o'clock, so it's a little after four o'clock now, but you know, this is a great time to come out here and, and targeting the species that we want to target. Late, late afternoon, early morning is always a good bite, so Get on that late bite. And see if those black fin are up on the surface, maybe a wahoo there, the tail end of the day. Should be, should be good. All right, we're gonna have fun either way. Trips kind of always last minute, it's funny. You know, you try to plan things out ahead of time for production. It never really works out because you're always at the mercy of weather. So if you get a weather window that opens up and that's what we had, you know, I started making some phone calls. Justin Rieger, he's a local captain, and actually his uncle owns Blue Marlin Cove, where we're staying, so it, you know, I had given him a call about finding out about accommodations here, and he mentioned that he was available, and it seemed like a great opportunity to, I've never fished with him, I've been friends with him for quite a long time, I've known him as a captain in town in Stewart, so that was an opportunity for him and I to finally to fish together. And then a good friend of mine, um, Jackson, who's done some stuff with me in the past, you know, he was available, so get a couple guys. We just loaded the boat up with a bunch of supplies and decided to make the trip. Yeah, you're at the mercy of the weather. Anytime you do a trip like this, you can have the best laid out plans, but you don't know until the morning you wake up when you look at the radar, there could be a thunder cell. You can look the night before and it looks like, oh, sunny skies. And, and you wake up that morning and it's an ominous thunder clouds and you see lightning off in the distance and you, know, you think you're gonna have a window and you hope that it's gonna dissipate. But there's often times you get out front and start to fish and the weather closes in on you. So that's what I'm saying. You, you constantly have to be aware of it. We got rain coming though. Woo. Coming behind us. One in front of us died and the one behind us built. have to watch it and there's times that you just have to pick things up and say you know what we'll try to do this later today and, and call it oh yeah double lightning there
It has been storming all day. I'm gonna do some spear fishing, which you do here in the Bahamas. We're right out front of Blue Marlin, 30 feet of water. Never know what you're gonna see. Some hogfish. Just relax, breathe up, easy down, have somebody with you. Pretty simple, I hope. We'll see. This is the place to do it. Bahamas is known for its diving. I mean, it's, it's surrounded by a giant coral reef. You gotta imagine out in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, whether you're just out there sightseeing on the reefs or you're hunting, it's, it's a great destination to come to get into water um, and discover that you know, there's so much to offer underneath the water that most people don't even realize. And there's different areas that you can do it. You can come here with the kids and you can dive as shallow as five feet of water or you can get out there and, and there's guys that push the limit, deep water, you know, spear fishing. So there's different opportunities for different levels of uh, expertise. I'm pretty much a novice when it comes to, to free diving and spear fishing. I've done it before and I'm pretty comfortable down to certain, you know, 40 feet and I feel pretty comfortable and I've, I've pushed myself further before when I've been over here. Um, but it's not something that I do often, but when I have the opportunity to do it, I love it. You know, and you can get out there with a three pong spear, just selective of the targets that you're going after and you can easily, you know, catch enough fish for dinner. I've never eaten lionfish. Uh, they're invasive on the reefs, so they're a good thing to try to eradicate. So any opportunity that you can get to, to take one of those is, is one that we will take. And I was really eager to, to give it a try, you know, as a table fare. Apparently they're excellent edibility, so it was something that I wanted to do. And when the opportunity was there to take one, I was definitely going to do it. The George shot a nice lionfish here. Now these guys have poison that's contained in these spines here and here. So when you catch these, I like to go ahead and get, cut those spines off because even after you cut it off the fish, they can still get you. A pair of shears, start at the back, cut up those dorsal spines. Right there, flush with the spine. Make sure you remove them all. Make sure none of them fall on the boat because like I said, even after you cut them off, the poison still contained in the spine can still get you. Now you just throw him right in the ice box like that, easy fillet later, nothing to worry about. Deep dropping is another popular technique over here. We call it grocery shopping. Again, it's one of those things you can kind of do in the middle of the day, the heat of the day. You know, a lot of the popular spots are between 800 to 1200 feet of water. We use electric reels because you can imagine reeling the weight up from that depth. So we get these hooker electrics, we drop them down, you know, multiple squid rigs or you know you can use barracuda bellies as well um, and you're fishing for all types of deep water snapper and grouper and it's a great way to get you know food for the table. Good bite? Yeah we're on. It's a decent one. Just need to forget about it sometimes. Yeah step away from it. What's your guess? Hoping for queen. Queens usually shake is like this coming up. That's what we're hoping for, hoping for a queen. The only other thing that'll shake like this coming up, occasionally you'll get jacks, even at this depth. Occasionally you get those green eye shards at this depth, but we're hoping for queen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice queen. Oh yeah. Floating the lead. Wow. Good, good queen there, buddy. Go ahead and just pull the rig up. Pull the fish up in the boat. Got the lead. That's what we're looking for right wow. there. Wow! That is a good one, dude. That's a good one there. That one will feed us. Oh, yeah. Look how pretty that thing is size of their eye for seeing in that depth. There's no light down there. All these fish usually have a big eye. Nice one. Nice queen snapper. That's gonna eat well. Oh yeah. Put him on ice.
So often when you come over here, you fish early in the morning, late in the evening. I mean, typically that's when the fishing is better. The middle of the day, especially in the summertime, the heat of the day doesn't always afford itself to some great fishing. So what we do a lot of times is we wake up early, we get out on the troll, or we look for birds. Um, we spend several hours in the morning doing that. And then those pelagics get it back out there. The birds start flying. It's a good opportunity to either high speed or go look for pelagics or look for birds for tuna. All right. so. An easy thing to do is we're just going to zigzag back and forth and change depths, usually between three, 300 and 1,000 feet of water. Anything less than 300, a lot of times, it's just solid barracudas. I mean, sometimes you will swing a little bit shallower. And the best thing to do is have the Raymarine loaded with Navionics. On the fishing chart, you can just see these, these contour lines, you know, and uh, it, the best thing to do is just zig. We're just going to zigzag back and forth across these contour lines. So you can really tell when you zoom out, you know, where these depths really change the most significantly because these lines are so close together. You, you really never know where they're sitting on the drop. You know, sometimes they may be a little deeper. And, you know, just like any type of fishing, we're trying to establish a pattern. If we can figure out a depth that they're in, maybe we'll concentrate a little bit more in that zone. Uh, and I'm sure it's tidal dependent as well. We're at the end of the outgoing. You know, a lot of times, this, you got to imagine, this is miles and miles of Bahama Bang. When that water, this is all shallow out here, thousands of feet of water, and then all of a sudden you come up to 20 feet of water for 100, over 100 miles. So as the tide falls off, you know, all that bait and everything comes off of that, you know, vast flat, and these pelagics, these wahoo will sit out here in this deeper water and wait for that bait to come off. So it's a really good time it was when the tide is falling, you want to be out here doing that. I mean, you can catch them all day long and any tide, but probably the best tide is a falling tide. He's gonna stop and then he'll come. Let's just get this stuff cleared out of the way. Got one on. Still taking a little line. Man, we've been trolling for a couple hours without a bite. Made some zigzags, just started to get some really good marks. As soon as we got a good mark on the machine, boom, the long one got hit. Seems like a decent Bring fish. Bring it back a little bit more there, George. These fish here, as you're pulling them along, you always want to keep forward motion with that lead on there. You don't want him to be able to come forward and beat the lead and create slack between your shock leader and that lead. So eventually what'll happen, majority of the time, is he'll eventually come to the surface here. You'll see him, his mouth will fill with fill up with water. Seems like a pretty decent one here. And when this lead comes up, starts to come up out of the water, I'm gonna speed you up just a tiny touch. We got a wahoo! Wahoo! He's spinning on me here. So what do you want me to do? So Jackson, get to the wheel. Get to the wheel, Jackson, and turn it left. It's coming, George. Stick him, George. Yes, sir. Good stick, George. Watch nice. your feet. Wahoo. Watch your feet. Woohoo! Yes, That's sir. What I mean. George, nice stick. Here, I got your gaff. That's it right Ooh. there. That's why we come to the Bahamas. You. That's what I'm talking about, George. Woo. Yes, sir. Let's get it. Oh, I made the show right there, baby. Yes, sir. Good fish. Look at the stripes on that thing. High speeding is a very popular technique to catch wahoo. You know, you'll be cruising 12, 15 knots. And you gotta manage, that's pretty quick. And there's not many fish out there that are gonna move that fast. And I tell you, when one of those things hits, you know it. Soap factor, boys. Whoa, soap yes, factor sir. 10, you. That's what I'm talking about. Nice Bahama wahoo. All right. There's one in the box. Just fits. You. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Bahama Wahoo, baby.
So we're sitting here in my brand new KMS 28 HP twin powered boat and fully equipped with the best Raymarine electronics. I really wanted to kind of go through and show you guys how I have it set up and really what's so special about the setup that we do have. First off, twin Axiom Pros. So I'm running three different transducers on my boat. I have a 600 watt for shallower water up to, you know, five, 600 feet of water. I have a 1KW, which is great for deep water, whether I'm sword fishing or deep dropping, that's a great transducer to have. And then I also have side vision and down vision. I um, really love the side vision when I'm, I'm looking for snook or tarpon along the beaches. So side vision, down vision, a 1KW and a 600 watt, three different transducers on this boat. Uh, in addition to that, autopilot, people think it's overkill. Really, this is one thing on the boat that I would not be without is autopilot. The use of this, whether you're slow trolling offshore or you're heading to a long destination, having autopilot is, is I'm telling you, it's a, it's a day saver. What we also have is a thermal camera. Again, this is invaluable in low light conditions, whether you're in fog or it's dark. Um, if you're in those types of situations, this affords me the ability to see, to see what's going on in front of me and to navigate safely. What's new for me, what I'm really excited about this year is the 12KW radar. And why do I have that on this vessel? This is a twin powered Camus. We're gonna take this further offshore. We're gonna be running to the Bahamas. And what do we do in the Bahamas? We look for birds and this is the machine to do it with. It has the capability, it has the power to find birds at far distances. And where we're hunting, tuna we look for birds so that affords me the ability to find those birds off at long distances it saves you a lot of fuel running around without finding the birds you're not finding the fish so really excited to have that radar system on the new camus ease of use that's really what i love most about ray marine is i can get in here i can easily navigate through all the screens i can set them up exactly the way i want they do everything that i need so i really recommend you guys go out and check out a local retailer for ray marine nearest you Staying pretty steady. Think that might be him, Jackson. I think we might have multiples on this one. Thinking multiples. It's multiple, but it looks like maybe a group on there. Yeah. Wow. That's what we wanted. Wow. Nice grouper right there. Yes, sir. Slide and grab that rig. Wow. Little queen on the bottom. This is actually a snowy. Yeah, check that out. Wow. Look at that. See the spots. How cool. When we say grocery shopping in the Bahamas, this is where you go. Get the hooker electric, drop it down 1,100 feet, and you bring home dinner. Whenever you can have cook your catch, it's a great time. They had a, a new chef at Blue Marlin, so he was eager to prepare our fish for us. And I always like to get the local cuisine, how they prepare it, the toppings that they use. So we have a variety of species that we were bringing to him, and he was going to cook them up for us just the way he liked it. It was a great getaway with the guys. It was a boys trip to run over here, jump in the water, 
do some, some diving, do some fishing, and just have a good time hanging out. I got this Camus. This is the first trip that I ran across in this boat, and it's not going to be my last.